Do you uh, know how many mosques in China? I don't. <laughs> yeah? Do you? I have a book mentioned uh -huh. that is more than 30,000. Indeed. Yeah. 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 More than 30,000. 30,000 mosques. Maybe more than any other Arab countries. In, in China? <laughs> yeah. But one thing I had observed in Oromchi, and the same thing also in Kashgar, that where the hotel were, we're looking around. You can count, you know, in the same street, yeah. uh, around the same corner, crossing, one, two, three, four. I mean, so much visible yeah, yeah. in functioning. It's not that they are closed as buildings, you ah. know, which is quite impressive. So, you know, okay, I mean. they're active. As well. The most, even yeah. the old ones, you are well preserved. Well preserved, well maintained, well serviced, you know, and mm. it seems that the local government are helping them to do that. So, here's you being welcomed by mm -hmm. the oh, local yeah. young people in your traditional costume. Indeed. Right. Yeah, they are very generous. Pretty, pretty girl as well. Very well, generous. Yes. Very well, speaking generous. of which, yeah. we, we noticed that in Saudi there's uh, quite active women empowerment going on, right? Yeah. This yes. is quite a uh, substantial change. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Can you please tell uh, us about that? The of women at the core of the Fijian 2030. Mm -hmm. I'm proud as a, a diplomat that if you go to the Minister of Foreign Affairs in Saudi Arabia, you will find more than 300 ladies. Mm. You, there's sort of stereotype. I invite you one day to go to Saudi Arabia to stay with them, and you will understand they are well educated. Uh, actually, uh, they announced uh, days ago um, that they can join the military. Wow. Mm. And what would they be wearing? Mm -hmm. What would they military? be wearing? Uh, military uniforms. Yeah. yeah. There's a big change. Yeah? I think, you know, some of these allegations, th these comments, it came from persons who criticize China. Some channels, some NGOs, they use it for pl political purposes mm. uh, to criticize others. And they will not stop, by the way because this is their job. Mm. I remember Mr. Ambassador, I was in Geneva in 1948, aftermath of the Second World, they adopted the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And under the umbrella, the General Assembly adopted two treaties or covenant, mm, which is civil and political rights. Yes. And the other one is economic and social and cultural rights. Yes. What is the matter there? Some countries, and you know them very well, they want to focus on the civil and political and ignore. Yeah. They are two baskets and uh, they are interlinked to each other, but they will, not, they will not allow themselves to speak about economic and social rights. They want to focus on the political and civil rights. Why? Because they use it to criticize, to put more pressure yeah. in certain countries. Mm -hmm. And who's these countries? Third world countries. Yeah. So I don't care about these comments that came from them because mm -hmm. the source of that is NGOs. And these NGOs belong to certain governments. They said NGO, non-governmental organization. In fact, they are 100% governmental. We know what's going on there. Mm -hmm. One, we believe all of us uh, on the principle of non-interference. Second, this is internal matters. This is important. Third, our mandate in China to focus on the bilateral relation and develop and promote, enhance this relation. And we don't allow ourselves to interfere in the business of others. Mm. So what we saw there, we saw beautiful cities, nice people, nice infrastructure, well-developed area. I noticed personally, the government there, or the governor, they are doing an uh, excellent job, great job. Mm. This is my 30 years as an ambassador, actually, mm. not even below that. We've been all the time lectured. We've been lectured that this is how we do things. Human rights, democracy, all those nice things. We have nothing about it. But to be lectured by those who've been colonizing us all the time, that's unfair. I mean, we cannot accept anymore. Who's, who has a glasses house, don't throw the stones. <laughs> Even those who have got their house now is, is not in order. They keep lecturing on those who have even better houses. Mm -hmm. That's really too much. I mean, to digest this, what we call double standard, this mm -hmm. hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you about one thing. We know what's happening in Gaza mm -hmm. and how much we are starving. Mm -hmm. We know even the International Criminal Court of Justice has decided just only two days that it has an authority to investigate the human rights. Mm -hmm. How many of those who are lecturing on us or in China are ready really to come and condemn 
and acknowledge the suffering of other people. No, they are really like to single out and do accusation. We are not going to get into that. We are not coming here to discuss politics. What are, we are trying to say is the following. As His Excellency was saying, we had been in Shinja. We had seen the life. Yeah. We had seen the people, how much they are really unsafe. We had seen what's going on in the term of development. Mm -hmm. I tell you, Xinjiang now, it seems to be leading in the term of investment in infrastructure and in modernization. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure the growth even there economically is much better than any other regions. This is the big news that not so many people are familiar with. Mm -hmm. What's happening there, what we had seen there in the term of industry, in the term of digital even technologies. Mm -hmm. So Xinjiang is not lacking behind anymore. On the contrary, in my opinion, is going to be very promising uh, distant mm -hmm. of investments. And this is the big news. Uh, I think the growth is uh, yeah. about 6.7. Indeed. Mm. Mm. Which is high. And not only in that, it's, it, it mm. is above the average in the country. And it seems to be th there is so much work going there. Mm. The very heavy engagement mm -hmm. in, you know, in agriculture, mm. in industry, in technology. Everything is going there. The infrastructure, the, the airports, which we had seen, the transport, the modernization is going so much rapid over there, mm. which is surprising because I went there four years ago and I had seen the difference within the last four years. Incredible. Mm. These countries, most of Arab countries was being colonized for many years. Mm. I think they start uh, their independency just in the 50s and 60s. Exactly. Okay, there's some progress, but Okay, we look forward for more and more. Yes. Mm. Back to this point. This is an uh, internal uh, affairs, and China knows how to deal with its community and uh, population. There's no need for lecture from anyone. The mm. principle of human rights is universal and excellent, exactly. but diversity is important. Yes. Mm. And we all, always telling them, um, we're talking about issues. These issues must be globally recognized. Yeah. Mm. So we cannot apply your rules on me. Your freedom is not of the expense of my freedom. Yeah. Mm. Well said. It, it's not only that, you know, the issue is even much broader. You know, we should admit, they, they have their own values, the, the, the Western liberal democracy model which mm -hmm. was working very well for them. Now it's in trouble, it's in ambassador, But it doesn't mean that it fit to my size. It doesn't fit according to my culture, according to my faith, according to my identity. Not necessarily what fits for you in the term of model of your, what you are dressing, necessarily goes into my size. Oh, Some no. people think that they think one size can fit for all. There's many crimes around the world. We will not focus on that country, but we will focus on that country. I don't want to mention names, but tell me, with your democracy, look at Africa. You made a democracy, yeah. but poor society. Yeah. As if it's priority for them. Ah. It's not development. They will not... Uh, it's not starvation. Yeah. That, that's not, uh, not an issue. Yeah. Deep box, no. yes. We need democracy, we need elections. Perfect. We need a parliament. But the others, the population needs food, health care, okay. education. That is the fact. And when they provide them with support, they make them suffer a lot yeah. to receive them. And what is really frustrating? And their democracy destroyed yeah. many countries in our region. They were at look what happened with what they yeah. called Arab Spring. Look, where is Iraq now? Where is Libya now? Where, where, is, is, Li where is Lebanon? The this Arab is sometimes Spring really didn't go to Saudi, but yeah. why? Why? Because uh, we have no spring. We have always summer. Summer. <laughs> 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 no. so This program is quite important, and I would encourage most of our friends, brothers, fellow ambassadors, maybe, to come on program. Tell us what do they think? Because we have to learn from each other. We have to listen to each other. I wish the program all the best. And those.